Hi, welcome to the third part of the C++ guide for JS developers. I'm Oscar, and today we're going to talk about uh, types and certain structures, which are the basic structures that you will need whenever you're using um, C++. Now, once again, I'm just kind of going over the stuff that I wrote before, the, the written version of the C++ guide. You can get it on Gumroad, the link will be in the description. Now, um, if you come from the JavaScript world, you're probably used to declaring your variables and just using them, allocating any value to them. And um, it gets cumbersome whenever you start coding C++ that you have to know all the types of your variables. There is one convenience type though, which is called the auto type. So for example, if I declare a variable like this, then this will dynamically take the type of whatever I am assigning to it. This is not the same type of dynam dynamic variable as in JavaScript, right? I cannot go afterwards and change this to a string, for example. It doesn't work like this. It just takes the first type of the value that's passed to it. This also works with functions, for example, where I can see something like this, um, generate random float, for example, this will generate a float for me. And then if I call this here, then uh, the value, you know, once my, com my program gets compiled and it starts running, this will take a float value, right? So this is convenient if you don't know all the types of the program you're trying to write. Now, there are other variables, um, other modifiers to the variables, for example. One important one are constants. So for example, I can declare a constant int. So afterwards I cannot change this, right? This will fail. Um, the value is fixed. Uh, one important thing to notice about constants is that they can, you can also mark arguments as constants. So for example, if I have uh, plus, for function and I mark the argument as constant. If I try to pass anything except a constant to it, then this will also fail. All right, so for example here, this will be fine, but if I try to pass it just an int because it's mutable and here I could do something, right, that, that modifies the actual value, then the compiler will not be happy and it won't let compile the application. Great, so now um, let's take a look into vectors. Uh, so once again, if you come from the JavaScript world, you're probably used to uh, just declaring an array whatever way you want it, right? You, you say uh, const my array, you know, and you just have an array and you can always push more data to it. Um, this won't work on C++, of course, because JavaScript does a lot of the heavy lifting for you, right? Whenever you actually push something into a fixed size array, um, the array already has a certain amount of memory allocated to it, right? Um, whenever you want to push more data into it, then the computer, the processor, or the operating system they need to find a bigger chunk of space in the memory where all the data can fit in. So all these operations are hidden from you in JavaScript. On C++, um, if you deal with raw arrays, then it won't work. Uh, but there are some convenience classes that does some of the heavy lifting for you. Now, one of those classes are vectors. So you can include a vector uh, by just including the package name. This is part of the standard library, so you don't need to uh, do anything too special about it. And you can declare it with a type. So for example, I'm gonna declare a vector of strings. And it's gonna be called my vector. Um, now, I'm, let me check. Oh yeah, well, Let's not touch strings yet. I'm just gonna go with integers. And yeah, of course, I need to use the namespace. Great. 
So the vector behaves a lot more similarly to what you would expect from a JavaScript array. I can go and push back items. Um, complicated signature, we don't care, right? And I can just add more items to it. Um, we will later see, because this is a class, right? And sometimes when you're dealing with other C libraries, except, um, especially, you might not have the, or they don't receive the vector classes. So you should be able to convert it to an array. Um, but we can write our own code to convert vectors to other classes. Now, like I said, you need to be careful because if you do too many push operations, then um, every single time that your array uh, grows, the computer will have to copy all the contents of your array into a new site, into a new portion of the memory. And that might be wasteful, right? You end up, you might end up losing a lot of time just copying stuff between parts of the memory. Um, another interesting structure you are familiar if you're a JavaScript developer are maps or objects, right? On JavaScript, you just declare your object and then you can immediately start adding keys to it, right? I can have um, my ID and so on and so forth. Um, once again, JavaScript hides a lot of the complexity for you. If you're doing this on um, pure C or pure C++, you have to be careful about memory and where things are allocated. But um, the abstraction is really useful. But And again, C++ does provide some utility classes for this. So if you're looking for a map, you can just use the map. Again, you have to be a little bit more strict with your types. It's not like on JavaScript where you can put anything you want in there. And um, let me just include string this time because it will be um, easier. And std strings, uh, my map. And the definition or the declaration of the map is a little bit different than um, from a vector. Uh, you not only need to declare the type, you actually need to pass the type whenever you're instantiating a map. Great. So now I have my map and on my map, the notation is fairly similar. All right, I can say hello equals to world. And um, that's how you use maps. Now, another important thing, sometimes you might need a little bit more complex stuff, right? Maybe you have, uh, you really want a more object-like interface and you also want more type safety than just using strings. That's when C++ gives you structs. So I can say my struct. So these are not necessarily classes, right? This is just small bundles of data. And I can say, you know, this has a message and it has a age or some, something like this, right? It's just an example. And why are you complaining? All right. Um, so then when I need a variable, I just say my struct, my example struct, and I can just say my struct and I pass the parameters that I need in it. Yes. Hello world and uh, an age of 23 or something like this. See if this compiles. No matching constructor. Mm. 
sorry, I had a little confusion. Um, you create the struct with a different uh, syntax. You have to use the curly bracket <clears throat> and you pass the same parameters in the same order. So here you can see on the C out, I am using the message. So um, depending on your editor, you might have some autocomplete as well. And if I run this, you can see the string that we have plus the age of the struct. So not, not classes, we could take a look at classes later. These are just small bundles of data. Um, it's important uh, again to notice that I could create an empty structure. Um, for example, my empty struct and declare it without any values inside of it and the memory inside of it will not be allocated they won't be reserved it's not then until we actually create some values for those variables that the memory is allocated so you need to be careful if you try to access the memory um, of an empty struct you might get some weird behavior and that's it for this part of the guide afterwards we will be looking into pointers and a little bit about memory thanks a lot and please consider subscribing